Good day and welcome back to my third video. So in this video, I'm going to explain about the third topic, which is the Gauss law. At the end of this video, uh, students should be able to state the Gauss law and also use the definition to derive the electric field strength. So first, uh, we understand what is electric flux, also known as the electric field line. So when you have the electric field penetrating through a surface area, so we say that the electric flux through that area is given by P equal to EA. So what happens if the electric field is not perpendicular to the surface? So we can apply the trigonometry and we could get the normal component of E, which is the formula of E cos theta. So the formula for phi is E cos theta times A. So next is about the Gauss law. So Gauss law says that the total flux, electric flux, is equal to the total charge divided by the permittivity of the medium. So combined with the formula of the electric flux, so we have the formula of EA equal to charge divided by the permittivity of the medium. So next, we're going to use the definition and the formula to derive the electric field strength. So in general, the first step, we need to understand the electric field pattern. And then based on the field, we choose a suitable Gaussian surface that should perpendicular to all the electric field line. And then we apply the Gauss law and also the formula to obtain the electric field strength. So let's look at the first example, the point charge. So the point charge has a field pattern as uh, shown in the picture here. So we could see the electric field is flowing in all the direction. So the second step, uh, we choose the sphere as our Gaussian surface. So we can see the electric field line is perpendicularly to all the surface of the sphere. So in step three, we're going to apply the formula we have that the area here is the area of the Gaussian surface, which is four pi r squared. So in the end, we could get the formula of E equal to Q divided by four pi epsilon r squared, which is the same as the previous video. So next is the second example is about the charge conducting sphere. So the sphere is actually almost similar as the point charge. It's only a little bit bigger than the point charge. So we have a sphere with radius r that uh, we have the charge on the surface of the sphere. So if there is charges in the sphere, the charges would repel each of them to the surface of the sphere. So in other words, it means that there is no charge in the sphere. So there is no electric field line in the sphere. So other than that, the field pattern is similar as the point charge. So here we would pick the field sphere again for the Gaussian surface. Then we apply the formula. So for this derivation of the electric field for the conducting sphere, we separate them into two cases. First is the inner of the sphere, where we have zero charge in the sphere. So the electric field strength here is equal to zero. For outer surface, we have the derivation of E, which is actually the same as the point charge. So at the end, the electric field strength outside of the sphere is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon r squared. So the third example is the uniformly charged plane. So we have a charged plane. So electric field is flowing in two directions, which is to the right and to the left. So electric field line is perpendicular to the surface. So here, to pick the Gaussian surface, we would pick the cylinder surface. Since uh, we could see that the highlighted area, A, is penetrated by the electric field line perpendicularly, and we have zero electric field line penetrating through the curved surface of the cylinder. So that's why a cylinder is, is chosen for the, as the Gaussian surface. So for other uh, geometry, uh, you could consider cube, cuboid, or prism but actually it's not very important. So once again, we apply the formula where we have E multiplied two A equal to Q divided by epsilon since we have two surface area. So the, the electric field strength is equal to Q divided by two epsilon A. So here we introduce another terms, which is the charge density on the, on the charge plate. So we replace the Q over A equal to the sigma, where sigma is the charge density on the charge plate. So at the end, the electric field strength E equal to sigma divided by two epsilon. So in short, uh, we have learned the Gauss law and learned how to use it to derive the formula of E. So first, 
the E around the point charge, connecting sphere, and then the charge plate. So from the formula derived, we could explain the, the electric field strength produced by the charged body. So first, the points, uh, first is the point charge, where the electric field strength around the point charge is inversely proportional to the square of R. Uh, next, the connecting sphere, which has almost the same relation as point charge, except that it has zero electric field strength inside the sphere. And lastly, for the charge plate, we say that the electric field strength is uniform and is independent of the distance. So that's all for this video. Thank you.